We're dealing with change out of the heart. Our heart needs to be changed. First Samuel 16, 6 through 7. When they arrived, Samuel, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely Yahweh's anointed stands here before Yahweh. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, because I have rejected him. Yahweh does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance. But Yahweh looks at the heart. God looks at your heart. He really doesn't care what you look like on the outside. The outside, our appearance will be gone when our bodies die. Our youthful strength and looks will disappear probably before we die. But that doesn't mean that we walk around like slobs or zombies. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't, it does mean that we shouldn't put the emphasis on what's inside, in our heart, not on the outside, not on what culture tells us to look at. Our emphasis must be placed on the inside, making our heart match up to the heart of Jesus, Yeshua. Luke 6, 45. The good person produces good things from the store of good in his heart, while the evil person produces evil things from the store of evil in his heart. For his mouth speaks what overflows from his heart. If you want to know what a person's heart is like, more specifically, you want to know what your heart is like, watch. Watch what comes out of their mouths in the good times and the bad times. What do they say when things are going good? What do you say when things are going good? What do you say? How do you act when things are going bad? When circumstances turn against you? Out of your heart comes all that you think, say, and do. Matthew 12, 34. Offspring of vipers, how are you able to say anything good since you are evil? For the mouth speaks from what fills the heart. What is in your heart dictates everything about you. We can put it on a good front, but during times of crises, that's when our true self shows. That's when your heart shows. Listen to the words that come out of your mouth. Created me a clean heart. Sexual immorality, 
theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, folly. And that's not a complete list. And it's not just out of the hearts of people that are outside the church. It's the same problem with people that are in the church. Even people that call themselves Christians. Because we don't take care of our heart. We look at the outward things. We don't spend much time allowing the Holy Spirit to take control of our thoughts, our tongues. We may say that we are Christian, but have we actually made Jesus Lord of our life? That's what he wants. He doesn't want us just to come to him and say, please forgive me. He wants us to follow up and say, please change me. Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I hope God doesn't say that about us, about you, about me. That my lips say the right things, but they're not from the heart. So we can come to church, we can go through the right motions, know the right words to say, and even the right words to the songs. But too often we, it's, it's, it's an empty habit. We really don't have it in our heart. We have the head knowledge. We know. But we haven't put it in our heart. We don't have the heart wisdom. It's not part of us yet. 2 Timothy 2.22 So flee the passions of youth. And along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart, pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace. These are things that we are to be pursuing, running after, chasing after. Pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace. In other words, don't get caught up in the culture, in the fads, in the latest gimmicks. Our church is a Pokemon stop. We've had cars in and out of our parking lot constantly. Had three kids sit out here in the middle of this side, sitting in the middle with their Pokemon. Another one just walking back and forth all over the place. You know, it's, it's supposed to get people out of the house and get them out into the public. Well, it also keeps them away from God. Anything that will take our mind off of our relationship with God, Satan's happy with. And this thing now, I'm not sure, last, last week, it had almost as much as Twitter does. Almost as many people involved as Twitter does. More than that. More than that now. And it's not bad. But we're not filling our hearts. We're not feeding our heart the Word of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is true. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Change my heart, O oh God. You didn't know you were going to be preaching part of the sermon this morning, did you? Singing part of the sermon. Change my heart, oh God.
In order to change the way that you think, there must be a change in the heart. See, it's not an option. It's not just true of Christians. It's true of any group. You join an organization, you must accept their teachings. Not just in the head, but get them in the heart. Well, as Christians, we must have our heart changed. And when our heart is changed, not only do your words come from a purer heart, your actions and your thoughts also will. Those things, your words, your actions, thoughts, come from whatever it is in your heart. Your heart dictates these other things. It's not an option. Now, like I said before, we can put on a good front. We can wear good masks. But in times of crisis, your true heart will show. Isaiah 65, 14. Yes, my servants will sing for joy from their hearts, but you will cry out from the pain in your heart and howl from an anguished spirit. Out of your heart. When we humble ourselves before God and accept what Christ did on the cross, then He will change us on the inside. Ezekiel 11, 19 and 20. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will, will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. <coughs> me. When God changes our heart, our life will be changed. We will seek after God and what He wants for us. So the question is, who or what are you seeking after today? And you are seeking after somebody or something. The same cry of my heart.
Time for a cough cup. I knew this was going to happen because I woke up and my throat was, my voice was pretty deep this morning. First Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. This is a painting that my niece Danica did. It's called Dear Nicodemus. Nick came to Jesus at night. He was a Pharisee. Not like all the other Pharisees, though. There was something that he saw in Jesus. Jesus was getting through to him. In order to be a Christian, you must accept what Christ did. His birth, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. That is the only way to heaven. Jesus said he was the only way. No matter what others may say, all paths do not lead to heaven. And the whole trip begins in the heart. There must be a change in your heart. And that change in your heart will change the way you live. For some, these changes may be very quickly in certain areas, and a lot slower in other areas. For other people, it may take a long time for some of these changes to happen. But change must take place. The key, there will be change. This change is not an option. Because it is out of the overflow of the heart that you live. What is in your heart dictates all that you think, do, say, both good and bad. Has your heart been changed? Or is it just your mind? The diagram here should be familiar to some of you. We are made up of a body, soul, and spirit. Before being a Christian, our spirit is dormant. Our soul is fed through the body, through our senses. Our senses relate to the world and those things around us. And Satan is the god of the world. So if you're going to dabble in the world, you're going to get what Satan has for you. And as he influences you, as, he, as, as you allow the world through your senses to, to feed your, your soul, your heart, your, your mind, uh, your emotions, the world will dictate how you live. And it will be real familiar. Like I said before, that's all you know. But somewhere along the road, God will break into your life. Every human being. To begin with, it will be through your senses. He will reach into your, your soul. And if you happen to respond as he shows you his way, as he convicts you, and you respond and you accept what Christ did, that he makes your spirit alive. He brings it back to life. And he will dwell in you through your spirit. He lives in us. Scripture tells us the Holy Spirit lives inside each one of us. Now we have a choice. You either allow the world to speak to you, through your senses, to feed you, or you allow God to feed you through your spirit. And it's that whole question, which one do you feed the most? And you can tell that by the way you live during the week. And if you want to know why you keep falling on your face, it's because you allow the world to feed you, and not the spirit. Which one do you feed the most? The ultimate question 